we're going to look at graphing absolute balance. So here's a here's a graph in blue. Um, I've got the equation here too. Y equals two x minus two. So it has a y-intercept of minus two right here, and it has a slope of two or two over one. So let's say up two over one. Yep, up two over one. And then I've got a couple of points plotted on here. So the blue line would represent the function y equals 2x minus 2. But let's say I wanted to draw y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2. So remember an absolute value simply means the distance the point is from 0 on a number line. Or if the number is positive we're going to leave it positive and if the number is negative we're going to make it positive. So I can do the same thing with these with these points on this graph and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my y values because the new y values equals the absolute value of the old ones. So if I start on the left side of my graph here, here there's a y value of minus 6. If I'm going to take the absolute value of minus 6, that's going to make that point positive 6. So remember the absolute value is the distance that negative 6 is from 0. Well that distance is of course 6. So my new point is going to be positive 6. Absolute value is always positive. Here negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4 would be positive 4 so the new point is going to go up there. Here there's a, um, a y value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So these points have have flipped up here. Now the points are coming like this. Here's 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And now here we have a y value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is still 2. So these points are going to stay the same here. Dot. Here's a y value of 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4. And here's a y value of 6. The absolute value of 6 is 6. And so the graph of y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2 will be this red looking one here. And no matter what your function is, all of the y values of the graph that used to be positive will stay the same. So notice how this part of the graph stayed the same. But these negative y values, and this will be all the stuff below the x-axis, so all the negative y values, they get flipped. They all get flipped up here into the positive y values. Okay, so it's like this line is reflected in the x-axis and, and brought up here, this part of the graph. So this is the equation y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2 and this is what its graph would look like. If we were to come up with the equation for this graph, we can do this in another way. We can do what's called a piecewise function. And when you think of this graph, there's actually two pieces to it now. The original blue one was one straight line, looked like this. But the new one has two parts to it. It has this part here, which is the same as the old one. But then there's this other part now over here. And this represented all the points that got reflected in the x-axis. So instead of writing a graph in, in the absolute value, we can do what's called a piecewise function. This is really important. We'll do, we'll do quite a bit of this uh, work later on in math courses, particularly Calculus 12. So y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2. We're going to write this now as two separate functions. So this part here is exactly the same. 2x minus 2. This red function here is the same as the other one, the original one, 2x minus 2 but only for x values that are greater than or equal to 1. The x values that are greater than or equal to 1 will give us the exact same graph. When x is less than 1, so that was all of these values here, this equation is not the same as that this one anymore. So this one used to be y equals 2x minus 2 down here as well, but that part got reflected. And any time you reflect something in the x-axis, it's like multiplying everything by negative 1. So this y value used to be negative 6. 
we multiplied it by negative 1 to make it positive 6. Here, this y value is negative 4. We multiplied it by negative 1 to make it positive 4. So another way of looking at the absolute value is all the negative numbers get multiplied by negative 1 to make them positive. So anytime you have an equation and you've, you've done some reflecting in the x-axis by taking the absolute value, the equation for that can simply be the same as the old one, but multiplied by negative 1. So instead of writing it as y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2, we could say the function is really y equals 2x minus 2 for the x values that are greater than or equal to 1, and then it becomes negative 1 times 2x minus 2 for the x values that were less than 1. And then if we want, we can tidy it up. So this is the same here. And then if I multiply the negative 1 in, this would become negative 2x, and multiply the negative 1 in here as well as positive 2 for x values less than 1. And then usually in math, we want to start everything with a positive number. So instead of negative 2x plus 2, I might start with the 2 first because it's positive, and then write and then write the negative 2x. So 2 minus 2x. Um, notice how the equal to sign here stayed with this one. This point actually doesn't really matter where it goes because it's zero. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. But don't don't put an equal to sign under this one as well because then there's sort of you know a point defined at one here and another point defined at one here. So just have one of the one of the parts with the equal to sign. So if you're going to go x greater than or equal to 1 here, then make sure you go x is less than 1 for your second choice. We'll look at another example. So here's a parabola, y equals x squared minus 4, and let's say we wanted to sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So generally we move we move left to right, and so here we're taking the absolute value. So here are the y values 5. That's going to stay 5, because everything that's positive is going to remain exactly the same. So I trace over my graph here. But now here we get into the negative y values, and so here's a y value of negative 3. If we take the absolute value of that, that's going to be positive 3. And here the y value is negative 4. The absolute value of that is positive 4. Absolute value here of negative 3, positive 3. And the absolute value of 0 is back to 0. So this graph, here's our negative y values down here. We need to reflect them in the x-axis because they will be made positive. And then these values here, so here's a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's the y value of 5. Those will stay positive because they were positive, and the absolute value of any positive number is a positive number. So here's the sketch of the absolute value of x squared minus 4. The graph's identical where the y values were positive, and where the y values were negative, we've taken those values and we've flipped them or reflected them in the x-axis. So when it comes to doing our piecewise function, we can say that y is equal to, now here, the graph's exactly the same. So here the original graph was, let's go to blue, y equals x squared minus 4. So this part here is identical. Same thing. So y is going to be equal to x squared minus 4 for the x values that are less than or equal to minus 2. So for all the x values that are less than minus 2, we're getting the exact same equation as our original function, x squared minus 4. But here, so here's the original one right here, which was x squared minus 4. For these x values, those got reflected above the y-axis. So anytime we reflect above the y-axis, we have to put a negative 1 or a negative in front of this because we've multiplied those y values by negative 1. So this would be negative 1, or negative bracket x squared minus 4, for the x values that are smaller than 2 and bigger than minus 2. 
So for all these x values between negative 2 and 2, we're going to get negative x squared minus 4. And then once we get x values that are greater than 2, the graph is exactly the same again. So we would say y is equal to x squared minus 4 here for x values that are greater than or equal to positive 2. So the same function, x squared minus 4, the negative of that function, negative x squared minus 4, and then the same function, x squared minus 4, on these um, x values. And then if we wanted to, we could take that middle one, and put the negative inside. So this would be negative x squared plus 4 and usually we would write the positive one first, so 4 minus x squared. Whoops. For the x values between 2 and minus 2 and then back again to x squared minus 4 for x values greater than or equal to 2. So this would be the piecewise function of um, this absolute value. So these are the same same things, just this way is written without the absolute value signs. So to graph an absolute value function, what we want to do is we want to keep the y values the same if they were positive to begin with. So like these ones here, these are some positive functions. We want to keep those the same. There's some positive y values. We want to keep those the same. And that's anything that's below the x-axis, so that's like these ones here and here, they're negative y values. We want to reflect those above the, the x-axis. So I'm going to move these up to here. There's a, a y value of negative 3. Move it up to here, positive 3. Connect those. And those points would curve up like so. So we've reflected the negative ones above the x-axis. So all those points get reflected above and all those points get reflected above. Well, let's say you're asked to to graph this function here. So you're given the given the function. One way we could do this is simply with a graphing calculator and get a little picture of what it looks like. So we would go, um, I think it's option, num, f5, abs, abs for absolute value. So the absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 12, close bracket, enter, and it looks like we're going to have to play with the window here a bit. Got to go even a little bit higher. Let's go to the right a bit more here too. Okay, so this might be the sketch of the graph of the absolute value. The graphing calculator will do that for us, but we're interested in doing this algebraically. Um, so we could we can find some things here. We can find um, x-intercepts and y-intercepts easy enough. Let's say we want to find the x-intercept. Remember to find the x-intercept, we need to make y equal to 0. So we'd have 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now notice because we're equaling 0, we don't even really need these absolute value signs because the function is neither positive or negative. So we can just solve the equation like this. This is a quadratic equation. I like to write my x's on the left side, so I'm just going to change the order here. And I'm going to factor this. Two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to minus 4 would be minus 6 and plus 2. So I get, whoops, I get x minus 6 times x plus 2 equals 0, which means x minus 6 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. So that gives me x equals 6 or x equals minus 2, which means when I'm drawing my graph, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
this will be an x-intercept and minus 1 minus 2 this will be the other x-intercept so I know that I now know the x-intercepts of my graph I can also find the y-intercept I just need to make x equal to 0 so y will equal the absolute value of 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 12 0 squared is 0, 0 minus 4 is 0, minus 12 is minus 12, and so the absolute value of minus 12 is positive 12. Ooh, let's go up by 2's on this axis so that we can get that point on there. So I've now got my x-intercepts and my y-intercept, um, but I still don't really know what this graph looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph, instead of the absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 12, I'm going to graph this one right here without the absolute value. Because I know if I have that graph, I'll be able to graph that value because it'll just be the negative stuff flipped up into the positive. So this is a parabola as we know. And I'm going to complete the square here. So x squared minus 4x and I'm going to pull the minus 12 out of there leave that leave that out and I'm going to remember half of negative 4 is negative 2 squared is plus 4 so completing the square take half of the coefficient of x and square it so that's 4 and to keep things balanced I'm going to put the minus 4 out there so this becomes y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4 factors to x minus 2 all squared minus 16. So now I know that this is a parabola. It's positive here, so I know it opens up. And I know what the vertex is now. I know the vertex is 2, negative 16. Right 2, down 16. So Whoa, this is going down a ways here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, minus 16 would be down here. So 2 minus 16. So the actual graph, I'm just going to draw this as a dotted line. So this would be the graph of the parabola y equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. But I'm drawing the absolute value, so let's draw the absolute value in red. So the red one will be the graph that we're trying to do. So these points will be more or less the same here. But now these points down here are going to be the ones that get reflected above. And I already know that it's got a y-intercept of 12, but I've now got this additional point 2 minus 16 becomes 2 positive 16. And then here's my x-intercept, so I know it's going to go down to that point. And then these points were positive, so they're going to continue positive. So this would be the graph of the absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then if we wanted, we could do you know, a piecewise graph because we have the x-intercepts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and minus 2. So we can say it's this equation for x values less than minus 2. It's the negative of the of this down here for x values between negative 2 and 6 and then it comes back to the same function for x values greater than 6. So that's how we can graph uh, absolute, value fi absolute value functions when we determine the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts and we complete the square of the uh, function without the absolute values on it.